Kingfo's trust in the illustration is a very useful style and can be made quickly. So let's first discuss the building of a king post truss. You will need five logs and a tie beam. The tie beam may be the top log off of the gable end wall. The logs might be cut in a mill or they may be hewn by hand. Prepare the five pieces by cutting them just slightly over length, maybe 200 millimeters, and flattening the straightest sides to a thickness of 200 millimeters. Make sure that you don't come too close to the line, and then you can finish with a hand or electric planer. This will be the two principal rafters, the king post, and the two purlin braces. Place the material on blocks at a convenient height, and if the end lines are not already in place, carefully level the flats and draw these lines. snap center lines on all four sides. On the top end of the principal rafter, place a mark about 100 millimeters from the end. With two squares, carry this mark around the log to each of the center lines. If you are working alone, use pins to hold the square in place. Choose which side will be the top and which will be the bottom of the truss leg. 
it might be a good idea to mark this onto the wood. Our truss has a slope of one to one. Therefore, on the underside, drop back 200 millimeters or the thickness of the material and square a line across the work. Now draw a temporary angle as a cutting line. You will now need to know the width of the flat on the top end of the king post because we are going to make a neat fit at each join. Transfer this width onto the flat sides of the principal and make a preliminary cut. This cut should only be close to the line. Our purpose is to establish a flat surface on which we can draw an accurate line to lay out the top tenon. This line will be a little way up onto the slope of the scarf, but this is still a straight line and much easier to establish than if we drew an arc around the curved side. Lay out and cut the top tenon. Score the plumb line. We have designed this tenon to be 100 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters long at the plumb cut. Cut right on the line so that cleanup is minimal. Do both sides.
Use a template to check the size. The template can be made of plywood or a synthetic material, but it should be very accurate. Take care with this template. It's very easy to make the tenon too small or the mortise too large. It is a good idea to have the male half of the template one millimeter smaller than the specified size in order to assist in obtaining a tight fit. Cut and dress the tenon to size. The scarf will be finished when the truss has been assembled. You can now lay out and cut the bottom end of the principal rafter. Measure very accurately to the lower end of the leg and do the same layout and cut as we did at the top end. This time the tenon will be 100 millimeters wide and 100 millimeters deep and the full length of the horizontal cut. Remember when you make the cut at this end of the principal you will not have an escape opportunity and your work will have to be accurate. Square this length measurement across the work. Place another line 141 millimeters along for the tenon and lay out the width of the tenon while you are there. Roll the log onto its side and carry your original dimension line around to the other side and square this across the flat. Measure up 200 millimeters or the width of the principal if it is different and place another line across the flat. You can now draw in the diagonal cut lines. Place lines across the end for the width of the tenon and lines on the side for the second cut line. This will bring the material to near the width of the flat on the tie beam, as we did for the king post on the top end. Cut the scarf and the flat, then draw the accurate cut lines for the bottom end. 
score and cut this line to complete the third cut. To obtain the most accurate cut, work from each side, then roll the log up to make the cut for the tenon. Do the other side the same way, then check with the template to bring the work to the required tolerance. Square the end of the tenon to the specified length, in our case 283 millimeters from the inside surface. Cut and dress the completed lower tenon. Lay out the mortise for the purlin brace. This should, in most cases, be one halfway along the principle. This mortise will be 100 millimeters by 200 millimeters and only 30 millimeters deep. Its purpose is only to keep the brace in place. Score the lines, then cut the mortise to size, and this piece is complete. Check with the template. 